Good morning, everyone. We are going to start a new experiment today. Experiment one was that I did a 15% iron solution alum bath on all of this protein fiber. I was told you could do it cold overnight and it would have the same effect as simmering it. And then it's just one less time you have to simmer your fibers. This one is in the aluminum triformate, just like we had. And today we are going to do experiments with weld, which is a yellow dye, and a cool stuff called Saxon Blue, which is a liquid indigo. Normally, indigo dyes you would have to dissolve in an alkali solution, and it's kind of scary, and it smells weird, and you have to do it outside, and I'm not, I don't want to do that. So that dye typically only works on protein fibers. Like it just, it really does not adhere to plant fibers no matter how you mordant them. And that is okay. But we are going to try and use weld today. And then if I do any fabric in the weld, I will be using an iron modifier because you can do a lot of fun stuff to weld with iron. So I'm gonna glove up and, oh, I'm gonna also show you the fabrics that I have soaking. Reusing my soaking water from uh, soaking all the yarn fibers. There's no reason not to since you're just rehydrating them and they're already clean. So these are all prepared for dye uh, fabrics from, ooh, those soaked up a lot of water. Uh, these are all prepared for dye fabrics from eQuilter and they are the most luscious cottons and linens you have ever felt in your life. I am never sewing with anything else again, but fancy, prancy, e-quilter, foo-foo cottons. But these ones I'm going to mordant today either with aluminum triformate or oak gall uh, tannins to make sure I have some really nice fabric to do our hammer printing on and all that good stuff. But I'm going to get us all set up and I will check back in for today's weld experiments. Y'all, I just had an autistic moment where my brain finally made a neural net. I'm mixing my oak gall tannins to mordant fibers this morning and it smelled like my old Western saddle. And I was like, oh, they call that oak tanned and it's a vegetable dye because it's oak tanned and tanning like tannins. If somebody else had already put that together, then good for you, but I hadn't. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna mordant some fibers and I'm gonna start the weld boiling at 50% of the dry weight of fabric. We have to keep it under a boil actually and not let it boil for one hour. Um, you can also pre-soak your weld or if you're using weld extract, then that's a totally different thing, but we're boiling up the plant. Uh, so I will show you that in just a second. Oak gall tannins simmering away, oak gall tannins mordanting today. Okay, so this is weld. This is the dried form of a plant, not the extract, which would be, uh, this has already been boiled down, extracted all the moisture from it, and made into a powder that is an extract of the dye, like we had the cochineal. This is just the dried plant. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Walnut Farm Designs. The... The seller was incredibly nice. I got stuff on Etsy from her. The Everything was packaged beautifully, and she sends you these lovely little info sheets that either teach you how to use the uh, items you got or they teach you about the items you got. So huge shout out to them. If you need dyeing stuff, please go visit them. They were lovely, uh, not sponsored. They were just very nice people, and they donated a little item to uh, my Patreon snaffle this month. So... I'm going to get the weld going. We are not to boil it. And right now we also have an oak tannin mordant bath going. These are the fibers that we're going to do in the weld and see how stuff comes out. Should be fun. All right. Don't nobody tell me how to science. I just had the brilliant idea of using a friggin' thermometer. Genius. I know. As though no one has ever done this. Perfect. We want it around 200 degrees. So I've cracked the top because I don't want it to actually simmer. It's supposed to just be barely not simmering for our weld here. Uh, and we've got about 20 minutes left for it to release color for us. But I can see that there's yellow coming out. So exciting. 
Okay, so our weld is looking very, very yellow. We are going to strain it. We are going to add our fibers and then we are going to bring it up again to not simmering just below a boil and leave it there for roughly an hour or longer if we feel like it. Uh, but I'm gonna get this strained and then I will show you as the fiber goes in. So this is our weld dye, which right now looks very orange. Uh, that's usually a good sign. I think we have very hard water here, so even filtered, it's probably still pretty hard water. But let me get this in with the fibers and we will start heating it up. Okay, so we are gonna do about an hour in here uh, at below a simmer. And when it's done with that, I think we'll let it cool down to near room temperature because I am putting some wool in here and we don't want to shuck it and shrink it. Uh, not that it matters. I mean, I'm not going to knit anything with this. It's mostly for experiments and science, but that's okay. But here goes the weld. Uh, and if I've called it something else again, uh, my, my brain is tired today. Ooh, it's turning stuff yellow already. How exciting. Um, I'm going to agitate this like maybe every 10 minutes. I'm going to set a timer so that I make sure everybody gets well covered. But there goes the weld and on to another experiment. So I am reusing some uh, pre-soaking water here. I had a thought. Usually you would take the previously, this is what I uh, oak gall tannined earlier so that it's ready for prints. That's why it has a bit of color. This is our fufu fabric. Uh, and cottons and linens. The other ones are in there, still pristinely white because they have not been oak gall tannined, which is what is rinsing out of this currently. Now, it is believed that fibers don't, or cellulose fibers, meaning plant fibers, don't truly absorb the dye and in a permanent, a very permanent sense. I mean, it'll stay, but not for 5,000 years, I guess. I don't know what the timeline is on these people, but they're very specific and not specific about every instruction they give. So I, I'm doing my best trying to translate all that. But anyway, they say that you need to treat it first in tannins so that the tannins will do something to the cellulose fibers and allow them to actually accept the alum or aluminum-based mordant because otherwise it's not actually penetrating the fiber in the way that you think it is like it is when it leaps into wool or any protein fibers. So it didn't say what alum I have to use. And the other one, I boiled them forever and ever. And the, the, the boiling, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's the least eco-friendly part is all the boiling you have to do and heating things up. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll do a small experiment. Some of these are staying as oak gall straight. That's, that's it because we want them to print with iron. Some of these were going to be oak gall and alum. So instead of using the boiling alum, I'm going to use the aluminum triformate and we'll see if that looks different from anything else because why not? And it's here and science, as long as you write it down. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, the weld is currently welding itself on the stove. Temp is about 130 on our weld dyeing. It looks really lovely and like buttery yellow, I would say. Trying to merge some of the yarn. I know, I know, I know I should be undoing it better from the skein, but I live in deep-seated fear that I won't be able to detangle it. And so it's, it's, it is what it is for now. I will get better. I am learning. I know it'll make the dye variegated on the on the on the scheme. Okay, so we're gonna continue forward. Okay, we are just coming up on about 45 minutes. Ooh, it's so yellow. So exciting. Let's check our temperature. I mean, obviously it's not boiling, but we'll check our temp. We're really learning to dial it in, you guys. We really are. About 180, so it could even get a little warmer and we'd still be okay. So we're doing really, really well. We're gonna give it another 15, and I think we'll call that done. Oh, I was leaving it slightly cracked. That's how I was maintaining the temperature. Okie dokie. Okay, we're following the rules, and we're gonna take it off since it's been an hour. It didn't say to do it for longer than that. It said you could leave it overnight at this point, but I think we all know I'm not gonna do that. 
And you can see how much it loves to jump into those wool fibers, my goodness. And the cotton is more yellow than it looks, but it's more like a butter yellow. But holy Mary, that sheep's wool. Good heavens. And I think that might be the aluminum, uh, the, form, the Formate one, because that is incredibly dark. I wonder if I'm over mordanting them. Well, we're going to let this cool off. And then we're going to do a modifying bath with iron again for fun. And we're also going to do the Saxon blue dyeing for fun. Exciting. Okay, almost ready to take the weld out. I have made a resting station for the hot wool fibers because we shouldn't shock them by putting them into cold soapy water, even if we want to keep them the color that they are. And then I also have a 1% weight of fiber ferrous sulfate bath. You can see the little bit of undissolved bits down there but it's greenish, the crystals, until you put it in. It hits the oxygen, which oxidizes the iron, and then you get kind of rusty, sulfury looking water. This smells like a stainless steel pan that you're scouring with hot water. So we're gonna pull out fibers, we're gonna wash ones that we wanna keep, and we're gonna sadden some of them in here to get different colors and see what we get. None of you will find this shocking except for me because I've never done this before, but boiling a bunch of wool makes it smell like sheep in your house or wet dogs. Oh my God, this one in particular really smells of wet sheep foot. Oh, no. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, we have to wash this. Oh, Lordy. No, wait, do I wash it if I'm going to do the Saxon blue? Crap. I don't know. I don't know the laws. Okay, I have to, I have to go Google. I'll be right back. Well, what I can tell you is there's absolutely no information on whether or not I should rinse that off before I put it into the Saxon Blue, but it also said that it was really good to have your yarn preheated so that it took well into the Saxon Blue. So, I mean, I just, I don't know what to do with that information, but I've started some water up to boiling so that it will, or not boiling, but just below a simmer so that I can put the Saxon Blue in it and we can try to make green here. Okay. Uh, thanks for nothing, Internet. I will figure it out myself, as usual. Okay, we're down to the yarn, things that are being washed, and the saddening. So here's our Ferris bath, and these can turn a range of, like, khaki greens and stuff. So let us see how they satin in a few minutes here. And I'm going to go add a few drops of our Saxon Blue to the dye bath, which scares me, and I feel like this will stain anything I come near, so I'm gonna be very careful about that and not film it. Well, it's very, very uh, buttery yellow in person, if it's not coming across, I hope it is. Here's some saddened ones. Keep in mind that these are straight oak gall tannins, so they're gonna have a much more intense reaction to the iron bath than anyone else. These ones are not saddening as much as I thought that they would, so that kind of surprises me. It makes me wonder if I didn't get the weld exactly right, but that's okay. We're learning and we're still heating up the indigo bath. Okay, the instructions are basically uh, do it till you like it or take it out and notice if you want to add more. That is the instructions the internet and the world have given me. So I've got some more intended in different ways. Plain yarn that it should be color fast in. It's only color fast in protein yarns, this uh, version of indigo. So I thought this would be a dramatic place in. Oh, and it is, okay, yep. Okay, so those are gonna be colorful. And then we've got some tweed ones that were more dented at something else. Going down. And I'll try to unwind them a little more in a second. And then these are our two beautiful children from the weld bath and we're going to put them into and see what kind of magical greens we get. Ooh, so exciting. And here's this dark one. Ooh, cool. That one's like true green. How exciting. Okay. So they're in there. Uh, I'm afraid to stir this with anything other than a stainless steel stick. So I'm going to go find a stainless steel straw. But look, it's doing it. We're making the blue. Normally in ancient times, you would have dipped them in woad, which is the other blue one, but then you also have to add urine. 
and I didn't think we wanted to go there, so I didn't and won't. Anyway, uh, this is going now. Hooray! So it says simmer as long as you want, uh, or until you like the color. It says you could leave it overnight, or you can take it out and wash it. It says lots of things. None of those things are exact on when the hevels I should take this out. But I can't exactly just take it out, because then it will cool off too fast. So I know I can't exactly just take it out, but I don't want to lose all of the green. So I think I'm going to get my weird little tray back that I was warm cooling everyone off in or whatever. And I'm going to pull out our green ones because I don't want them to get so dark we can't tell they're green. To be perfectly honest, it was hard to even tell who was who in here because this guy I'm pretty sure is just plain with blue. This one is plain with blue. These are our green ones that should be yellow with and I realize it'll be a little bit variegated. That is my own fault. I am well aware, thank you. But I went rogue with the last two skeins in there because it said if you didn't like how dark it was, you could add some more indigo. So that's what I did, and God for, I hope that's safe to put down the sink when we're done. But once these cool off a little bit heat-wise so we aren't shocking them to death, uh, I will uh, wash them and we can see what hell we have wrought exciting science ah! stuff started happening very fast and i just i had to go with it so uh these were these ones were very blue um this is one of our greens uh it's a little variegated because i'm not a professional and i'm still learning what i'm doing in life and this is also one of our greens that came from the yellow weld so these are all going to dry these ones just came out they got extra time with the blueness so we'll see if that does anything. Um, some of these stretchier ones, I guess I should lay down, not hang. Anyway, I'm going to clean up. That's the washing liquid. I'm going to rinse everybody one time in clean water and then hang everybody to dry for the night. Okay, I'm stopping here because I'm scared of it at this point. Um, these ones obviously got extra time in the blue. Um, but these were not even in there for five or six minutes with this stuff. The, the two darker ones were in there longer, obviously. Uh, you can see there's some variegation to my dyeing because I am not an expert dyer. I'm learning, and this is fun. Uh, look at our green ones, though. It's variegated probably because I didn't untwist it uh, enough in the weld to make it go even, but it's actually kind of pretty all variegated. It's like a varying shades of this like wonderful deep aqua. And then this one, it only really changed the tonality a tiny bit to have the yellow. It maybe just made it a little darker. But very exciting. So these are going to go up to dry for, I assume, 350 years because that's something else I've learned in this process is that wool never dries. So uh, note to yourself on that as far as dry times. Uh, but I will see you in the morning so we can look at all of the samples of our Weld and Saxon Blue experiments. So I wanted to review our Saxon Blue dyes, which are finally dry enough to look at. And I think this is a really great uh, show of an experiment. Let me explain. So we have down here, we have our two that were treated with weld first. And because I left this one twisted up, we actually got a really nice view of like the huge range of color it can give you. If I had left it in a much shorter time, it probably would have stayed this like lighter sea foam like this one, but I didn't. And or it had less actual weld in that area, so it's a little more normal blue. But this one also treated with weld. And the interesting part is all three of these uh, rougher yarns were treated with just 15% alum. Whereas these ones, all the skinnier yarns, were treated with alum triformate, which is said to sometimes make the colors richer. And I think I would have to agree. So I'm going to have to try some of this one that's been done in alum, aluminum triformate and see if it comes out different. But the other interesting thing, these ones have the yellow weld first, but these ones were just put in with different concentrations of the Saxon blue. So these, this one, and this one, 
these two were left in the exact same amount of time as the green mixed ones. So maybe like five to eight minutes. And you can see that they're quite light. And I pulled them out. Probably could have gotten them a little dark, darker, but obviously they were twisted. But I kind of am enjoying the variegation as like a learning experience to see what range I can get. But this one and this one went back in the dye bath with an extra, oh gosh, another two eyedropper fulls of the solution. So you can see how much darker they got with another five or six minutes and a little more indigo compared to these two that were in for a shorter amount of time. And all four of these started out just white and mordanted. Uh, these ones, of course, again, had the weld. So I just wanted to show you this really, really fun range we got. And any of the white bits you see in here are the tiny bit of nylon that's woven into that fiber to strengthen it. And wherever it is in a clump, it did not take up any dye. Um, this uh, Saxon blue will not work on plant or synthetic dyes, nor will any of the Mordens. So I am so proud of how all those came out, and I hope that you are enjoying watching this experiment. And here is the amazing results from our weld. So this is our control, which had nothing and is roughly the same color it started out as. This is a alum bath with 1% uh, modifier in iron. This is oak gall tannins, 1% modifier in iron. This is the aluminum triformate with 1% modifier in iron. And this is the oak gall tannins plus alum. And again with a modifier, which is reacting more strongly because this has the tannins in it. And then in our beautiful yarns, this particular yarn, I think this is the Swish. I don't think it's the Baby Alpaca. I think it's the Swish. But this one, I did an aluminum triformate, and it came out like the dream color of weld. So that was perfect. The cotton came out a really nice kind of butter color. That's the cotton yarn. And then this one came out very variegated because I had it way too twisted up. But it's still got a really nice color in it that I thought was really pretty. And this one was just 15% alum. And also, I did the 15% alum without heat. So I'm wondering if it really does need the heating on the alum, at least when you're doing yellow dyes. Because yellow can be a hard dye to get it to stick. I hope that you are all proud of yourself if you tried dyeing something. I sincerely appreciate it if you watched this long, long experiment all the way to the end. And I would sincerely appreciate you liking and subscribing as I continue to endeavor to try and make my life as a partially disabled person work by doing art and talking to you guys on the internet. So thank you so much. Uh, please hit that like button and come back for some more dye experiments. I can't wait to work on so many others with you this month. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye!